Uh, the topic today, as Wendy has said, will be research-based fiction on the afterlife. Guardians of the Afterworld uh, is the third and last of my afterlife novels. Uh, it's the most daring. It pushes the envelope, so to speak. <clears throat> what do I want the reader to get from reading this novel? Uh, this is what I wrote Wendy a few days ago. I'll share it with you now. Actually, it's 12 points. And then I'll be reading to you uh, a couple of examples of, of each from, from the novel. But the first of all, the world we all enter at death, the astral world, sees things differently from us. Their solutions to uh, problems, unsurprisingly, uh, often differ from ours. Uh, their priorities often differ from ours as well, as you would expect. The astral world, this is the second point, uh, is an active, not merely passive environment. Uh, like every world, physical, <clears throat> astral, or more evolved, appointed or chosen leaders oversee, govern, keep order, and protect it, and protect it from homegrown or alien mischief. Two advanced spirits, Newman and Cephia, are the governing couple, the guardians in this story. The challenges they confront is the novel's primary focus. Third point, many layers constitute this world, from the darkest dungeons of the Shadowlands, fit for chronic evildoers, to the seventh and highest sphere of the astral, where joy reigns and souls preparing for evolution to higher worlds have their homes. Fourth point, the core experience in the astral, where physical violence, hunger, injury, and death are impossible, is restfulness, recovery, self-examination, rehabilitation, and delight. This is not true of the Shadowlands, of course, where souls remain stubbornly resistant to the healing light of the astral. Fifth point, but it's not all bliss in the astral. Experiences range from elation to deep disappointment. Despite endless options for entertainment and new friendships, sadness or boredom can set in. Depression sometimes occurs and counselors are present to help when unresolved reincarnation is sometimes a last resort. Sixth point, the astral world is not self-regulating. Justice doesn't automatically happen. Disputes are not uncommon. Authorities at many levels are responsible for resolving them. The guardians are the top authority, but there are many lesser. Laws set standards, jurisprudence, and politics are part of the astral scene. Seventh point, astral spirits take an ongoing interest in our world. They remember it well, after all, they were recently there, and desire to help us. Their invisible, unnoticed, usually unappreciated influence is critical to our planet's survival and order. Uh, these creative helper spirits introduce many changes in our world, from artistic to technological to social and political, both at the individual and planetary levels. We are wise to ask their help in our affairs. Eighth point, every organism, from cell to plant, from animal to human, from planet to sun, from galaxy to universe, is ensouled, and to some degree self-degree self-conscious or, or conscious. The more evolved the consciousness, the freer it is to determine its future. The earth and sun are no exceptions. Ninth point, astral worlds have a completely different history from physical worlds. They don't evolve the way physical systems do. In a sense, they are special creations, and they are not controlled by the same physical laws governing the physical universe, such as the limiting speed of light. Tenth, astral worlds are the creations of minds and can be, and can be altered in radical ways by the power of minds acting in unison. Our astral world is constantly being altered. The guardians overlook and guide the alterations. Number 11, the astral world is not meant as a permanent home. All souls will eventually choose another birth on a physical planet or graduation to a higher, more spiritualized, more evolved world. And last, the trillion galaxies that make up the universe 
are filled with planets with intelligent life. Many are more advanced, both technologically and spiritually, than Earth. Earth and its astral world are visited by curious and sometimes concerned beings from these planets. This is the platform. This is what I, I want to share. What I'm going to do right now is to read to you from one of the chapters. It's an early chapter, um, the uh, new um, guardians or regents, as they're sometimes referred to, have been on, uh, who ha have been chaired for only four months at this point. Uh, the first problem that was introduced to them uh, was the war in Ukraine, which has created all kinds of problems uh, in the astral world because of a, a, a huge number of souls swamping the receiving stations. Uh, other problems are concerning also uh, there are great, there's a great deal of hatred that's brought in by soldiers who hate the opposite uh, side, and this hatred has to be dispelled somehow, or there will be a descent into the unfortunate uh, lower worlds. So uh, I uh, thought about reading from that chapter, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and read from the second chapter, which is also an early concern of the newly appointed uh, astral governors or guardians. Their names are Newman and Sepia. Uh, this deals with the problem of the children's religion. A notoriously difficult case reached the guardian's attention in their fourth month. Uh, incidentally, the guardians are appointed uh, anywhere from 80 to 100 years. And then they, uh, some, a, new, a new evolved soul takes their place. It would be the second case to test their wisdom and power, the first being uh, the Ukraine war, with far-reaching consequences covering the entire astral world. Great numbers were closely involved in the outcome, and passion was already running high. It involved religious instruction for children. How should it be carried out? Basically, three options were on the table. Should children be brought up in the religion their parents would have raised them in if they hadn't died? Or should they be brought up in a broad-based faith recommended by astral scholars who deplored religious exclusivism? Or should they be raised with no religion at all? Those are the three options. These are the options confronting the new guardians. The court consisted of 11 jurists serving as advisors to the guardians. Attorney, uh, uh, attorneys were uh, to argue the case in front of them. Then the jurist would discuss the case with the guardians and try to reach a decision. As the executives, Sephia and Newman, listening, inquiring, confirming, refuting, whatever they were inspired to do, would then render their judgment. If they couldn't agree between themselves, the case was hung. This is what happened when the same case came up for Davinus and Prima during the last months of their regency. Their failure to agree created turmoil throughout the astral world and almost led to a divorce from each other. In effect, Earth's afterworld had been poorly governed for the seven months leading up to the Guardian's installation. The case had arisen in one of the many Muslim sectors. A decision would shape policy well beyond a single Muslim sector or even beyond the religion of Islam as a whole. Christians were especially uh, watchful. Many who took an interest in astral governance in it for its own sake, but had no skin in the game, no relatives affected, would find the goings on fascinating as high quality entertainment. And journalists by the hundreds from all sectors and spheres would be following every twist. The astral world that Sepia and Newman governed, life after death as it's really existed, parted in fundamental ways from the way Earth's religions usually pictured it. If great uncle Jeff were a Christian on Earth, he was not a Muslim or a Jew or a Hindu or a Buddhist. He viewed them as wrong in some fundamental way. But when the same Jeff died and found himself in the new astral environment, he would eventually realize that quite a few of his former beliefs didn't add up. For example, he couldn't find out, he couldn't help but notice that all those people he thought would go to hell lived in the same world he lived in. And all those other people who thought he would go to hell had been just as wrong. Or that the afterlife was, wasn't at all like what uh, he, uh, he had been told. Where was God with Jesus at his right hand? And so forth. 
So he would make inquiries and discover, further, that many souls around him had discovered a new kind of religion, one that rewarded or punished souls not for their beliefs, but for their character. Known as the universal religion, it appealed widely to those who thought religion important but needed revision. Such was the environment that Newman and Sepia found themselves in. The court assembled in a complex outdoor structure of trellises that stretched up to a ceiling composed of spreading flowers of many colors, shapes, and scents. The setting was especially pleasing and harmonious. So that's an example of a problem that we can imagine, that I can easily imagine, would surface um, in the astral world. Um, I don't think I've ever recovered, uh, I've never read of any specific uh, case like this, but I certainly have read in many uh, accounts from our, uh, our helpful um, spirits speaking to us through mediums uh, about the, uh, the importance of religion over there and the difficulties that many uh, experienced uh, soon after death when they discovered that what they thought was true didn't turn out to be. I can imagine that this would be a common problem and that it would have to be dealt with. And so chapter seven deals with that. Uh, my second um, reading is going to be, uh, shall we say, a little bit more daring. Um, I'll go ahead and read it to you and then you can figure out what this is all about. Something like this could conceivably happen. I haven't found anything in the literature that says there was anything quite like this that happened, but um, the background suggests that it easily could. By now, the uh, regents have been chaired for quite a few years. We've jumped in time. By the way, the time of the novel sets in, in, in about, uh, about 2022. Uh, I was writing uh, during the, uh, the war, uh, and uh, I thought that I would start the novel at that point and then move toward the future. So this happens approximately in, in the late um, 20, uh, 20s, maybe 2020, 28, 2029. Uh, at 1258 Eastern Daylight Time in six American cities, a gray avocado-shaped object approximately 15 feet high and 50 feet long dropped quickly from the sky and landed softly on National Football League fields surrounded by 60,000 or more fans minutes before the kickoff. Stunned, amazed, frightened, disbelieving sounds leapt from the stands, unlike anything heard at a game as a portal opened from the object and three humanoid beings slightly less than four feet tall stepped out with arms raised. What happened next varied from city to city. In Washington, D.C., for the first half minute, the three beings stood, their arms now lowered, and waited to be taken. No one moved toward them until five policemen, guns drawn, moved cautiously forward. As they approached the beings, an assistant coach from the Washington team rushed up and Stopped, stepped in front of the police as if protecting the intruders. Five minutes later, the aliens were whisked into an ambulance and driven to Andrews Air Force Base. The craft, with five more aliens still inside, was allowed to take off and led by helicopter to the same base, where it landed in front of FBI agents. Military brass, a platoon of soldiers with weapons held in the patrol position across their chests, and several Air Force reporters and photographers. Five of the six football games were postponed until the next night, a Monday. Astonishingly, the New York Giants game commenced only 55 minutes behind schedule, as if one of the greatest events in world history deserved to take a back seat to a football game. News of the event reached Newman as he was overseeing a Meaning of Life conference televised across the Astral, and Sifia, as she conducted a conference to address the bitterness that the Uyghur Chinese felt against their, Han, their Han masters. Both were shocked and dismayed. Who are these beings? And if well-meaning, why hadn't they given a friendly warning? Sifia remembered seeing beings small in stature and put out an all-points bulletin across the astral to see if any resided locally. Aliens had always been welcomed. After all, Newman and Sifia were aliens themselves. Why no consultation, no warning? 18 hours later, a delegation claiming to speak for the intruders signaled by telepathy to Newman that they were responsible and could explain the situation. The guardians told them 
to report to the capital at once, to the capital of the astral world where they resided. Five spirits looking like earthlings, they had assumed an earth-like uh, appearance, met the couple in a walled-in clearing surrounded by soaring dark needle trees resembling spruce. The spirits knew the universal language. They said they came from a planet in a different galaxy, but in the same galactic cluster. The name of their planet sounded like Tijiv. So the rest of the chapter, I think this is one of the most <laughs> fascinating chapters, um, unfolds and, 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 and describes what the, uh, what the Guardians did in a situation like this and how it all ended. It ended well, but uh, only after quite a bit of stress and difficulty and disagreement. Um, I'm going to read a final uh, section, and then we'll uh, have a discussion. Um, this will take us into the Shadowlands, which is always interesting. Um, <clears throat> this is a later uh, chapter. Um, chapter 23, there's 31 chapters altogether. So quite a bit of time has, uh, has rolled by at this point. A long tradition in the astral was an annual fair that paralleled Earth's autumnal equinox. On September the 22nd, the celebration began. Tournaments with games ranging from three-dimensional chess to co concerts with instruments and sounds unknown to Earth. Dances featuring ballet artists whose controlled stretching of arms, legs, and neck had developed an art form unique to the astral. Historical theater placing side-by-side -side events, events as, purported, as reported by Earth's historians, and those same events staged as they actually happened, sometimes with the actual participants doing the acting. Comedy routines making great fun of the stupidities of Earth, which left their audiences laughing uproariously at how seriously they took themselves. And costume contests designed to bring out the most beautiful, the most bizarre, or the most hilarious inventions were all part of the fun. All this merriment and celebration was followed a day later by the Day of Penance, a worldwide call to descend into the shadows. None, no one expected the Guardians to wallow in such a dirty business as it was sometimes called. But some in the past had. Now in their fifth year, actually, it's, yeah, the fifth year, Newman and Cynthia talked it over and decided, and decided to participate and, and to descend. Newman reached a land, uh, I'm skipping quite a few pages. Newman reached a land of jagged rock formations wrapped in a darkness that his eyes could barely penetrate. Could this be the bottom? He wondered. Strange screeches uh, at first distance echoed around him as if he were in a cave. Moving steadily forward, he came upon a sizable crater with a fetid watery substance in it suggestive of a swamp. Sometimes something was thrashing around and making the screeching noise. He thought at first it was some kind of aquatic beast, but then realized two spirits were dueling each other. Around the crater, other spirits seemed to be watching the battle, but with little apparent interest. Newman came upon a spirit seated higher up. Excuse me, sir, but what's going on down there? What? Who, who are you? said the man, shot, drawing back in alarm. You're burning me, an observer. You don't belong here. Get away from here. What's brought you to this wretched place? Wretched? Are those your friends? Where? Down there, seated along the bank, the spectators. Spectators? They're not spectators. They're blind. Newman noted the man's clothing, no better than rags. He saw how the man never met his gaze and realized the man was blind too. The man spluttered contemptuously, get out of here, go back where you came from. First tell me, what do you all share? What has brought you together in this place? What did you, what did you do on earth? You're hurting me, you're hurting me, I tell you, go, go. I will if you tell me, what has brought you to this place? The man yelled, we kidnapped children, blinded them, okay? My God, man, why did you do that? You promised, go away, go away, you're hurting me. Tell me why and I will. They made good beggars. We lived off the money they brought us. That's how we survived. We took care of them, fed and clothed them. 
took them to the temple or mosque to do their work. It was an honest living. Without them, we would have all been beggars. No one seemed to, no one seemed to, to, call, to care. The man yelled, we kidnapped children and blinded them, okay? Uh, wouldn't you prefer light? I can help you regain it. Get away. You're a torturer. Get away. Far away. Leave this place. And so and that's the story of uh, Newman's descent into uh, the perilous uh, and deepest uh, conditions of the, of the dark world.